I've crunched the numbers and the results are in. Last year, with electricity prices skyrocketing, I spent £14,000 and DIY installed a 28 kilowatt hour home battery storage system with two 4 kilowatt Victron inverters. For over six months, I've been using this system to shift almost all of our peak consumption into the cheaper off-peak period. Today, I'm looking at how the system's performed, how much money I've saved, but as a bonus, the data should also allow me to project if I'm ever going to make my money back and work out if adding more battery capacity is a good idea. Our system was installed in mid-December 2022, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to skip December's data today and look at the six month period from the 1st of January to the 30th of June. Over the six months I'm looking at, I had no solar, so all the savings come from offsetting as much as possible of our peak electricity usage into the off-peak period. Here in the UK, I'm on Octopus Energy's Go Tariff, which is a four hour off-peak period running from 12.30 a.m. to 4.30. During that window, the inverters draw power from the grid to charge up the batteries. Then during the peak period, the inverters draw power from the batteries and supply it back to the house. Working out how much electricity costs is normally as simple as looking at your supplier's website or looking at your bill. Using a battery to time shift your grid consumption doesn't change this. And over the six month period, we consumed 6,145 kilowatt hours at a cost of 660 pounds or an average per kilowatt hour cost of 11 pence. In the UK, that's a pretty good price. But that's not the whole picture. To work out how much I've saved I need to know how much that electricity would have cost without the battery system. To start with, I exported all of the half hourly grid consumption data from the Octopus website into a CSV file. Locally, I use Home Assistant and InfluxDB to store all of the stats that come from my Victron system. To get the data I need, I ran a query in InfluxDB to export our half hourly consumption data from the Victron system, again, into a CSV file. So now I have the half hourly data covering what we've consumed from the grid and the half hourly data on the energy consumed in the house from the battery. Over the six month period I'm looking at, Octopus changed the rates for the Go tariff twice. They were originally 7.49 pence off peak and 30.6 pence peak. In April, we moved to 12 pence and 44.5 pence. And then later the same month, it dropped a little to nine and a half pence and 41.1 pence. To mash all this data together and work out the savings, I've written a small parallel script that reads in the two CSV files and the different tariff rates. It then iterates over the half hour periods and works out how much our peak consumption would have cost if it was consumed from the grid during that period and subtracts the actual off peak cost. Before I get to the savings, this data can tell me something else. It can also reveal how many days I ran out of battery storage and had to start importing peak price electricity from the grid. Because my house is still being fed from the input side of the Victron inverters, there's a bit of a lag between the load demanding power and the inverters seeing that load and ramping up to supply it. That means most days I consume about 2.1 kilowatt hours from the grid during peak time to meet that load. But on some days, I run out of power in the batteries and need to start importing from the grid. Out of 181 days I've looked at, I ran out of power on 83 days with an average overage of 3.8 kilowatt hours. This seems like a lot, but when you work out the cost, this only added 102 pounds to my bill over six months. If I only cared about the financial investment and saving money, I could probably only justify adding one more US 3000C battery at a cost of about a thousand pounds. Obviously there's more to battery storage than saving money, so it's quite possible I'll end up with more than one extra battery added. Getting back to savings from offsetting, over the last six months we used 4,379 kilowatt hours of energy during the peak periods. 553 kilowatt hours of that came from the grid and the rest came from the batteries. That energy should have cost me £1,332, but I've ended up paying £322. That gives me a saving for the six months of £1,010. There's one important item we've missed from these calculations. The £1,010 doesn't factor in how much extra energy we've consumed due to the losses in the inverters and the batteries. My scripts suggest this was only 223 kilowatt hours over six months, 
This would make the system unrealistically efficient at about 96% and only cost about £21 extra. If I use a more realistic 90% figure, that would suggest I paid about £42 extra. So a more realistic number for the saving is £968 over six months. If I'd purchased this system purely as an investment, where does that leave me going forward? It's not entirely fair to use the first six months of the system to predict the costs for the next six months or the future years. For example, in the UK, January and February tend to be colder than November and December. And our biggest consumer of electricity by far is our heat pump. But when it's colder, we always consume more electricity. But let's do it anyway. So a very simple estimate that ignores things like battery degradation suggests a year one saving of £1,936. £3,872 by year two, £5,808 by year three, £7,744 by year four, £9,680 for year five, £11,616 for year six, £13,552 for year seven, and 15,488 in year eight. If this estimate panned out, by the middle of year seven, I would have paid off the 14,000 pounds and everything else that I made from that point forward would be pure profit. A system like this should have a minimum lifespan of eight-ish years. And in reality, 10 plus years is not an unreasonable expectation. If it survived 10 years, I would make 5,360 pounds profit. There's so many variables that could affect this, so it's really only slightly better than a guess. But it will certainly be interesting to follow over time and see how close it ends up being. If you're interested in learning more about how I chose this battery system, check out this video here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.